Halloween once again, and especially gamers, being that this time it's a game review. And what better time to review a survival horror, and I should say zombie game, than this time of the year. And what game shall it be? None other than a game that I obviously anticipated for this year, Resident Evil Revelations 2 on PS4. Now, of course, this is also available on many other consoles, the 360, PS3, Xbox One, and of course, it just recently released for the PS Vita. But unlike Resident Evil Revelations 1, where it first released on the 3DS, no such version available. So, sorry, 3DS lovers. Not that that game was bad. It was excellent, and it definitely exceeded my expectations. But, yeah, I know the Resident Evil series and Capcom themselves have been up and down lately, so I was a little skeptical on this one as well, being that Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City and Resident Evil 6 have definitely disappointed a lot of fans, and myself included on some terms, so especially after number 4 and 5, which were really great games, number 4 especially, which obviously I reviewed in my zombie video game review, so it should come as no surprise I adored those two games, and they were great. Um, mainly the fifth one over the fourth one, but I still play the fourth one, and it's great. Yeah, I know the Ashley character is really annoying, and number five does have some computer AI problems as well, but yeah, that's been the main problem with these games. But Resident Evil Revelations 1, luckily, definitely exceeded my expectations for what a handheld Nintendo console can really do, though I haven't played the console versions. But enough with the bullshit, let's get to some zombie killing with this one. So how well does this one hold up? It holds up great. What's the storyline? Well, it's pretty simple, in fact, and that may have been some of the main criticism as well with this game. But what else do you really expect? Resident Evil is a survival post-apocalyptic zombie killing game where you take control of a gunner and, of course, you accompany another person usually most of the time. So it should feel familiar to most fans of this franchise. You get different weapons, you kill zombies, and yeah, of course it has a learning curve. And aside from like games like Call of Duty where you just shoot the hell out of things, this game, of course, you got to problem solve as well and navigate through different treacherous traps and zombies and uh, heal yourself. And of course, the computer AIs occasionally can be rather lacking depending on which game out of this series that you're playing. But luckily in this game, it's not too bad. In fact, most of the time, you can upgrade them as well. I'll get to that in a little bit, but the main story is, of course, you're playing as these two main girls, Claire and, of course, uh, Mara. They work for this company, and, of course, out of nowhere, all hell breaks loose, as you'd expect, and, of course, they're kidnapped and put on this uh, deserted island. I know it's not exactly the most riveting location, but for a zombie apocalypse game, well, it's pretty much the perfectly uh, fitting horror setting for a zombie game. Yeah, a rundown island where you're escaping out of a prison cell, and of course they've given you these bracelets from this crazy, evil scientist woman called the Overseer. Okay, spoiler alert. She's of course uh, got the same last name as, as you guessed, Albert Wesker, who you probably remember from Resident Evil 5. In fact, this game takes place in between Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil 6, so... Yeah, it somehow ties in. Her name is Alex Wesker, so... Yeah, she's pretty much put these bracelets on you, giving you these, and she, basically you're her guinea pig, pretty much, and she's basically testing you. So yeah, the main girl, of course, Claire, is the one with the weapon. She's the one you want to mostly play as, as most of these episodes. Yeah, of course, there's every episode, and yeah, that's how they do these games, so... Of course, you could choose to either download each episode, which is what it started out as, or basically buy it on disc. I recommend buying it on disc because, of course, you also get bonus episodes, but like I said, we'll get to that in a little bit, but back to story mode. Yeah, of course, um, the first part of every episode, you play as these two girls, Claire and Mara. Claire, as I said, has all the weapons, um, guns and molotovs and explosive weapons and such, and of course, you can also use a melee weapon as well. Mara, of course, is a wussy. She doesn't want to use weapons, the only thing she will use is a crowbar. Although she can use the crowbar as a weapon, which, well, isn't the most useful weapon, but it is pretty cool taking down enemies. Yeah, it's so much fun. That is if you can get it to work right. And of course she can use the crowbar to open boxes. This has a little bit of a learning curve to it as well. 
So it can be tricky. Easy at first, but tricky, and then it gets even more of a pain in the ass because then you gotta do two and three of them after a while, and ugh. You really lose your patience after that. Oh, and she can also use it to unpry boarded up doors. Not a bad necessity right there. And her other weapon, of course, is a flashlight, which she can use to stun enemies, as well as find hidden items that seem to be invisible to the naked eye. And as I said, you can upgrade these abilities too as well. So everything comes with an upgrade, but oof, good luck getting enough points after a while. You'd have to basically redo these missions after a while and keep getting points and ranking them up. But once you beat the game all the way through, you're pretty much not going to revisit these same exact missions. I mean, you just want to beat the game through, unless you're looking to basically get all the upgrades as much as possible. And yeah, you can get different uh, outfits for each character, but now I'm getting off track. So, basically, Claire rocks. Maria, yeah, she's not as good, so... And yeah, I know, you might be babysitting the other character and having to navigate your way through and puzzle solve and all that stuff, but that's what these games are all about. They're not only about shooting and survival and horror, but they're also about using your brain and puzzle solving and navigating your way through. You got the maps, you gotta kill zombies, and of course you get boss fights as well. So, yeah, it can have its difficulty and stuff, and you know, you have to heal yourself and protect yourself as well. So, it's a blast. And as I said, the settings and everything, it's horrifyingly gruesome, but it's the perfect setting for a zombie apocalypse game. Start out in you know, like a desolated jail cell, which is disgusting and... Ugh, just absolutely great fitting for a zombie apocalypse game. And then, of course, you get to the tower and you send out an SOS for Mora's father to come to the island. And then, of course, the other half of the episode, you play as him and this orphan girl named uh, Natalia, I think, her, if you pronounce that right. So just like Claire and Mora, one gets the weapons, like the guns and a bunch of explosive weapons and such. And, of course, you get a limited supply of what you can keep in there, so you can combine weapons and such to make different disinfectives and explosive weapons and such. And, of course, uh, the little girl, Natalia, I'm pretty sure I pronounced that right, her power is similar to Mara's, but without the use of a flashlight, give her the ability to be able to see zombies coming, even through walls. Damn, it's like Superman almost. But what's really a pain in the ass is when you come across these invisible monsters that float around, and God, I hate these. I mean, it's great to use her, and it's great that she gives you a warning, but half the times I can't find these damn things. I just gotta get lucky and shoot these bastards. Ugh. Hate these. But yeah, she can spot zombies coming, which is definitely more useful, I would say. And of course, just like uh, Mara with the flashlight, well, this time it's without the flashlight, she can spot invisible objects that are invisible to the naked eye. Definitely useful, of course. Oh, and she can crawl through small spaces as well. Very useful. For unlocking different doors, and as well as also open safes, but... This time it's not with a crowbar, it's with small hands. And, well, instead of a crowbar, she doesn't have much of a melee weapon, just the ability to pick up a brick and throw it at a monster. Or a zombie, or whatever. But yeah, pretty much you responding to the SOS because, of course, as I said, Barry is, of course, the father of Mara, and, well, he's trying to pretty much respond to her uh, distress call and find her. So, yeah, of course you revisit a lot of the same areas, and they are, as I said, horrifyingly uh, gruesome and, of course, mysterious, and the music is just great as ever. So, yeah, it's two obviously different storylines and obviously two different parts of every episode who, uh... Yeah, Claire and Mara, and in another part, Barry and Natalia. So yeah, you flip flop back and forth between both paths, and eventually both uh, do meet, and sort of, and then of course you lose track of each other, and, well, obviously you do meet again, despite some tragedy. So yeah, and you gotta manage through different obstacles, zombies. Booby traps? Yeah, there's these Indiana Jones-like booby traps spikes that come down on you. Damn. And even there's laser lights that can actually shoot at you. If you don't know how to do this right, then, well, you're a dead person. But, yeah, otherwise, you got obstacles, mazes, occasional teamwork is required, finding different keys and unlocking different doors, 
And yeah, of course, occasionally there are some parts in the game that are under a freaking time constraint. I mean, okay, I don't mind puzzle solving and teamwork and all that nonsense, but I really hate being under this kind of constraint. But yeah, just bear with it. It's only a few parts of this game. Most of the time, it doesn't have this, which is fine. But otherwise, it's pretty much what any Resident Evil fan would really want. And as I said, it can be difficult, but hey, I wouldn't say it's that difficult. And as I said about the locations and environments, yeah, they're not exactly riveting looking. I mean, it's all mostly run down stuff, but there's a lot of variety to it. From prison cells, as I said before, that are all abandoned and rusty, and all abandoned buildings from the outside, run down villages, forests, and even rusty old uh, mines and stuff. Yeah, you go underground to different mines that fill up with dangerous gas that you only can withstand for just maybe not even a minute. Of course, you got to get to higher grounds. Even a stage full of fire. Damn, that's what you call intense. Sewers different caves and and even rusty old mines where you have to get these old elevators working damn i'm surprised these damn things even work after all these years and you even got blood you have to level out yeah you gotta freaking put meat through a meat grinder and bring the blood level up shit but yeah that's pretty much what you'd expect and it's perfectly fitting as i said for a zombie apocalypse game it's just amazing how it's all on the same island jeez and of course, depending on how you beat the game, I assume, there's also different endings to the game as well. Not really going to give too much out, but yeah, at this point I might as well say, spoiler alert. And of course there's also raid mode, which has a little more to offer, but I'm not really going to get into, too into that. But the multiplayer mode, unfortunately, here's the major downside. Players, of course, split screen, and it looks like crap, judging by the f online videos that I've seen of it and most of the negative responses from it. But Jesus Christ, this guy needs to get a life. I guess I showed him a life after death, <laughs> even though it's from the undead. <laughs> but otherwise, great game, despite some flaws and um, yeah, occasionally having to babysit and difficulties and such. And especially terrific cutscenes, even though you have the option to skip them, but actually I didn't want to because really they're that good and the graphics on them are really well done. It's a pretty decent storyline. I don't know why it's heavily criticized. I mean, it's not the greatest, biggest storyline, but I think it does the job. Otherwise, it's a great addition to the Resident Evil series and it's definitely a step forward and definitely uh, pretty much... You can pretty much shoot out Resident Evil Raccoon City and... Resident Evil 6 out of the picture, like a freaking unheard dead zombies. I mean, Christ, those two games, forget it. But Resident Evil 4 and 5 are great, and so is this one, as well as the first Resident Evil Revelations game. Great job, Capcom. I'm well pleased. So, I give it a horrifyingly rockin' Wii Remote Wii Motion Plus up and a plain Wii Remote up. Believe me, it's that good. <laughs> Till next time, keep watching.